The man who led the effort to rename the airport after Harry Reid is County Commissioner Tick Siegerblum. He joins us on the phone now. Uh, Commissioner Siegerblum, uh, thank you for joining us. I'm just wondering the last time you talked to Senator Reid, and did he share any insight with you as a man who was approaching the end of his life that you could share with us? Um, just he, he was very grateful that we were changing the name of the airport. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he was always very short on words. He would call up and say, Tick, this is Harry, and then uh, talk to her a little bit. And then he would just slam the phone down and off he went to the next person. So he, he was not somebody that would call up and say, boy, that was the best speech I ever heard and whatever. Yeah, he wasn't really known for being, uh, you know, a warm, fuzzy person like some politicians try to be, at least, uh, when they're in the public eye. And certainly Democrats loved him, but a, a fair, a big number of Republicans did not. Did he ever mention that? Did it ever even bother him? You know, I don't think so. I, I think um, you know, he grew up in politics um, and, and fought his way from, from the state assembly to the Senate governor all the way up to the Congress and Senate. So, I mean, he, he was used to, to being fought, but, but um, he knew he wasn't the, the greatest personality, he wasn't the greatest humor. Uh, that was not his style. He was just, he was very diligent, he was very thorough, very patient. And more importantly, pugnacious. He was just, if he wanted to do something, he would do it. And the other thing is, he was incredibly loyal. If you were his friend, um, you know, he would do whatever he could to help you, and he never forgot where he came from. Of course, many people are familiar with his tough upbringing, born into deep poverty and searchlight, his father an alcoholic minor. Uh, his mom had to collect laundry to try to make a living to support the family. And, but yet he never tried to separate himself from that. He, he embraced searchlight. He embraced his upbringing. Absolutely. I said he, he, he never forgot where he came from and he never forgot that but for the grace of God, he could still be there. So, I mean, he, he, he was helped by a lot of people over the course of, of his life, but in turn, he helped a tremendous number. And if you look around, Senator Cortez Masto, Masto and, and Governor Sisolak and Senator Rosen and people like me, I mean, you just spread around um, people that he took under his wing and helped push him along, pull him along, encourage him. And, and they're what's going to make Nevada great going down in the future. Would you say that Nevada is a blue state, certainly in the last few elections, because of, of Senator Reid and, and what people call the Reid machine? And will that stay intact now with his passing? Well, that, that's, that's going to be our challenge. You know, he, he gave us the tools, um, and so we're going to have to carry on with his legacy. But he did see that, that Nevada was no longer the Mississippi of the South, I mean, of the West. Uh, you know, we're a very diverse state, uh, ethnically diverse, culturally diverse, and he reached out and brought all those groups into the Democratic Party uh, to make Nevada stronger. And as long as we keep growing in that sense, which we're going to, then I do think Nevada is going to be blue. But it's, it's always going to be a, a tough spot state because we're so small, everybody can know you firsthand. And you know, if, if you're somebody, a fake person and, and people know that, uh, you're going to have problems in Nevada. So three decades in the Senate, both as majority and minority leader, what do you think history will most remember Senator Reid for? Well, the, clearly his number one uh, success was Obamacare. That was the toughest bill. You know, we've been, Democrats have been trying to, to pass some type of national health insurance forever, and he was finally able to get that done. So that was a huge accomplishment. But, but uh, there's so many things he did, but mainly I think when looking at Nevada, he was never afraid to get his hands dirty and, and would jump into problems, intractable problems that people had dodged and, and looked the other way for decades. And he would just get in there and, and, and knock heads together and say, look, we've got to do something. This is, we don't have the, the rest of our life. And so that would be, from my perspective, his real legacy is he just was willing to, to get in and, and make things happen, fix problems, as opposed to sit around and talk about how great the weather is or pets about on the back. You know, after his retirement, and I know that you've had contact with him, but did he ever express any kind of, I don't know, maybe a rethinking of some of the things he did say about other politicians? And we know politics can be a nasty business, but some of the things about Mitt Romney not paying taxes or calling uh, former President Bush a loser or even some comments about Barack Obama. Did he ever say, you know, maybe I should have rethought that. Maybe I should have taken another approach or did he not even care about that? You know, to me, he never did, and, and truthfully, I think he was one of those people who, who just, you know, realized that he could have done better, but, but he's not going to sit around and cry over spilled milk. So mm -hmm. um, he never did anything, compare, you know, tried to overthrow the government like Trump has done or any of these crazy people. So, I mean, all of the things he did were, were maybe not the best of taste, but they were certainly nothing um, 
outrageous are and and, and it was always an American and in Nevada first. Mm. And he was diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer shortly after announcing his retirement. How did he handle that? That's I mean that's a, a nasty cancer, a, a one that usually has an outcome, the same outcome for everyone who who gets it. Was he at peace with himself? He really was. Uh, but as you know, uh, so many people with diagnosis like that, um, they literally are gone within a matter of months. And the fact that he survived three years just really goes to show his tenacity. And he stayed active to the to the end, um, was calling people, encouraging people, um, figuring out who to run for this, doing that. Um, he, he never stopped. So um, it, it, he just he lived life to the fullest. And, and so we're sorry to see him gone, but the truth is you can't say that anyone had a better life than Harry Reid. And look, what memory will you carry uh, of him? Uh, I think just the fact that he was just so humble um, and, and just came from nothing and literally just on his own grit um, became that powerful, that important. And then when he got there, instead of you know, going to Paris or whatever, um, he, he spent his time making Nevada better, doing what he could to help us out. Um, so he, he was always in Nevada in his heart. Well, Commissioner Tick Siegerblum, I appreciate you spending some time and sharing some memories with us about Senator Reid on the day of his passing. Thank you so much.